Hi, I'm Paul. This video is about microphone basics. Hopefully I can offer you some suggestions and some tips so you get better audio quality. But before we get started, one thing I want to talk about is headphone safety. So before you put headphones on, when you go to play back your audio or your video, turn the volume control all the way down and then don't put the earphones directly over your ears. Put them somewhere like this. Turn the audio up and then you can move them to your ears when you know or directly over your ears when you know that the uh, the audio loudness is safe. You don't want to damage your hearing and, and uh, cause yourself some problems because you and I've done that before. I've put the headphones on and it was too loud. The other thing, make a sample video 15 to 30 seconds long so you can uh, review the video quality and the audio quality before you start making the, uh, the video that you're trying to create. And don't drink carbonated beverages before you start recording. Otherwise, it causes you to burp, and that can be really aggravating. So I'm going to be using three microphones in this video. The HyperX SoloCast, which is what's in front of me right now, and the HyperX QuadCast S, and then an old Blue Yeti microphone that I purchased back in 2010. All the microphones are USB, and they're plug-and-play, so you don't need any special software to install or... Uh, any special adapters to use them to connect to your computer. I'm also going to be talking about two different mic arms and a mic stand that I own and give you some suggestions for using those. And I'm offering a free PDF to download. It'll have all the information that's in this video it's uh, completely free. You don't have to provide any information. There's uh, no email address or anything like that is required. You just click the link that's in the description of this video. It'll open up in a browser and then you can download it. I'm not affiliated with any electronics companies, any camera companies, any wholesalers or retailers of electronics equipment or software. I don't even have any affiliate links. I'm doing this... Uh, for no monetary gain at all. All the equipment that I have, I've purchased myself. And if there was a discount that was offered to the general public by the uh, manufacturer or the retailer. So when you're using the microphone, try to have it approximately four to six inches from your mouth. And don't talk directly into the microphone. Otherwise, you're going to have to use something like this, a pop filter. So this microphone, it's tilted on a 45 degree angle. It's pointed towards my mouth, but I'm speaking over it. If you use a microphone that's on a stand or on, the, on your, your desk, have it off to the side a little bit, have it facing towards you and speak past it. That way you won't get all those little, little pops and clicks that uh, you may need a pop filter for. Check the microphone meter levels before you start recording. So I'm going to show you that right now. So this is OBS Studio. And what you're looking at now um, is the uh, meter level of the uh, microphone, the HyperX SoloCast. I, you don't see uh, a preview because I have that turned off. Otherwise, it would look like two mirrors facing each other. But as you can see, as I'm talking, I tried to keep the audio level between minus 20 and minus 15 dB. Sometimes because of my voice, um, it, it goes a little bit above that, but it's staying in the uh, mostly in the green. Sometimes it gets into the yellow a little bit. You can see that I have this set at minus 6 dB. Uh, the other microphones that I, uh, the HyperX Quadcast and the um, the Blue Yeti, I have set it minus 60 or minus 3 dB. And the reason I've got these set differently is because I'm trying to keep all three microphones at the approximately the same loudness level. 
And because the solo cast doesn't have a gain control knob like the other two, I had to bring it down um, manually by, by using um, the slider that's right below the, the meter. So you want to make sure that you're not recording too high. You, you want to try to keep it into the green, and then if it bounces into the yellow, that's good. But if it's in the yellow and it's bouncing into the red, that's going to cause uh, clipping, which is going to cause distortion. Try to be in a quiet room if possible, no fans or air conditioners, but sometimes that's unavoidable, which is fine, mainly because like OBS Studio has a noise reduction feature. Most um, video editors will also have some type of noise reduction. I use DaVinci Resolve as my video and audio editor, and um, it has in the paid version, a voice isolation feature, which works great. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. But it also has a noise reduction feature. Try to be in a room that's away from street noise. In other words, a room that a window isn't facing a busy street. Use a silent mouse if possible. This one, the buttons, you click it or you press them and they don't click. I also have a silent keyboard. So right now I'm sitting in front of a, a four foot table that has a laptop. The laptop keys usually don't make any noise, but when I'm in front of my desktop PC, that keyboard, the keyboard that came with it clicked. So I bought a uh, Logitech wireless and uh, silent keyboard. So don't have, a, have those anno uh, annoying little pops and clicks coming out of it. Use a good mic arm, and I'm going to be talking about that in a few minutes, the, the two mic arms and the mic stand that I use. And if you're going to be recording outside, make sure you have a windsock over your microphone, because even a, a, a light breeze blowing across the microphone can cause unwanted noise and uh, distortion. So the HyperX SoloCast that I'm using right now it currently costs $39.99, and this is the 20th of January, 2024. That's the price on Amazon, and no, I am not affiliated with Amazon at all. It's a cardioid condenser microphone. So cardioid means that it's only picking up audio from the front. It's not capable of picking up audio from the sides, or from the back of the microphone. It has a tap to mute sensor, so you just lightly touch the top of it and uh, it'll mute the microphone. It does have a mic stand that comes with it. I never use it, I keep that in a box because I always have it on, mounted on a, either a mic arm or a mic stand. It has a red LED indicator in the front, so you'll know when the mic is live doesn't mean that it's recording, it just means that it's it's powered on. It comes with a 3 ace and 5 ace adapter. Uh, most microphones or mic arms or mic stands, um, it's either a 3 ace or a 5 ace. So this just screws into the bottom of the microphone. I think all microphones come with this, and then you can use it to match up to whichever size that the mic arm or the mic stand has. There's no gain control on this microphone. It has no headphone jack, and it did not come with the shock mount. That's this thing. So this is the HyperX Quadcast. This is the shock mount. Um, it helps keep the microphone isolated from the stand with these little, um, these little cords here. So the shock mount that I bought for this, I think it cost me $10. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hook up the, mic, uh, the HyperX Quadcast S microphone so you can get a chance to hear what that sounds like. This is the HyperX Quadcast S. And I think the only difference between the Quadcast S and the regular Quadcast I believe the regular quadcast, this was just red. So this has an RGB um, lights. 
on the, the Quadcast S, when you hook it up, it's changing colors. And you can change the brightness. Um, you can lower it all the way down so it's black, or you can just select a certain color. I don't know if you can see this in the video. I'm looking at the monitor, but it's just a very, it's red, and I just turned the, um, the, uh, the uh, brightness down. So that's pretty much the, the indicator, um, whether the microphone is live or not. So this is a cardioid pattern microphone. This one is $119 currently. Um, it has four polar patterns, which means it will, and it doesn't matter how you have the microphone oriented. I like it, as, as at least for now, in a horizontal position opposed to a vertical. But what what that means the 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 four polar patterns is so it's I'm using it with the cardioid right now so I'm only it's only picking up audio from the front. It also has a uh, bidirectional, which means it will pick up audio from the front and the back. So if there's two of you talking, you can have the microphone in between you and just use one microphone, just as long as one person is speaking into the front and the other one is speaking into the back. There's also a stereo uh, setting, which means it's picking up audio from the front and from the left and right, and then a omnidirectional, which means it's picking up audio from 360 degrees around the microphone. So on the back, you can see that it has the uh, knob for selecting the four different patterns, and it does have a... Uh, a gain control knob. It it comes with this stand, but I never use it with a stand. I always, I always use it with the um, uh, on a mic arm or or a, a mic stand. It has same thing. You just tap the top of it to mute it. Um, it comes with a three eighths and five eighths thread adapter. It has a headphone jack, and like I said before, it does come with the. Uh, with the shock mount. The problem with the gain control, it's not a problem with the gain control knob, but the gain control knob, you can, you, it, it, uh, you have these five dots, but it spins quite a bit. And the, it's, it's, it's really sensitive. It, it's very smooth. And when I'm re, when I've got the mic set, so right now I have it set on the smallest dot to keep the gain down so I can try to keep it matching the other two microphones. But as you're, as you're working and recording, you might bump into that knob and change the gain control setting. So what I did, I went and bought some of that really clear tape, the really clear sticky tape, not the, not the uh, frosted tape. And I just put a piece of tape. You can't see it because it's facing me, but I set the gain control knob to the smallest setting and then I just took a piece of tape this is metal and taped it to it and that keeps it from from shifting while you're uh, while you're working so the next thing I'm going to hook up my old blue yeti microphone so this is my old blue yeti microphone so I found it on Amazon at least the newer models that that are made I believe made by Logitech it does have a gain control knob. It has a headphone jack. Does not come with a shock mount. Although I believe you can buy one if you want to mount it to a mic arm or a mic stand. I've done that before. It's pretty heavy. It comes off of this base and it has the uh, 5 ace thread in the bottom of it. So you can do that. Um, but I, I, I decided not to to use this microphone for that basically because of the weight, but I do believe you can get a shock mount for it. It has a mute button on the front and the LED. Um, it's a red LED. It flashes uh, when it's muted and it does have the polar patterns. And also on the front, there's a volume control knob for the headphones. So I'm gonna go ahead and mute it and I'll show you the front and back.
So the gain control knob is the top knob on the back and the bottom knob is for the, the polar patterns. So I did put this, um, basically it's a pop filter on top of it and not so much for the popping because it's off to the side and I'm speaking past it, but I'm in a condo. It has carpeting and I've got this backdrop behind me, but the ceiling and what's in front of me, the walls, they they uh, don't have any acoustic panels on it. So the audio in this room isn't the greatest. So I'm going to talk about the mic arms next, but I'm going to go ahead and start using the HyperX Quadcast again because I know this sound from doing this video over and over. I know this sounds a little tinnier. The only way to get it to sound deeper, and again, it's it's probably about five inches from my mouth. But if I move closer, if I'm talking into it like this, let's say I was doing a video where it was just voiceover and I didn't uh, need to be seen, then it's going to have a, a little bit of a deeper sound. So I'm going to go ahead and hook up the... Uh, or, or reconnect the HyperX Quadcast mic. So the mic arms, the HyperX SoloCast, the first microphone phone I was using, um, that was an Elgato mic arm, which comes straight out across the table. And I'm putting images up. That's an all metal microphone stand or microphone arm and you can run the cable for the microphone through the arms and that keeps it from dangling out of the way this um with the uh mic arm with the uh hyperx quadcast s is made by a company that's either called nine tech or ix tech i don't know how to pronounce it or how they pronounce it it's metal and heavy duty hard plastic. And again, you can feed the uh, microphone cable through the mic arm. Both of them are excellent. They both cost $79. I can use it on this table because I just have my um, uh, laptop computer. I can't use them with the uh, mounted to the table that I have my desktop on because I have a gaming computer. It has seven fans in it, which that's not the problem. The fans don't make any noise, but it has an NVIDIA graphic card. And the problem is when the I'm using either DaVinci Resolve or some other software and it's accessing or the, the, the graphics card kicks in, even though I have the computer, the desktop sitting on towels and the uh, clamp for the mic arms, I put a uh, cloth in between the table and the and the clamp to try to help isolate it. It still picks up some vibration, which causes a low frequency hum that I can't get rid of. So when I'm in front of my desktop, I use the mic arm that's made by Amazon Basics, which is an excellent mic arm. I'm just showing pictures of it because it's kind of pointless. So you can only see part of it if I brought it out here. But uh, it's only $33, um, and it it works great. So I'm going to put, all again, all this information into the PDF. As far as the um, software, I use OBS Studio, and which a lot of streamers use and people who are make, make videos. Um, it's an open source piece of software. It's totally free to use. It's fast to download, easy to install. And I'm going to do a video, possibly the next video, that show, to show you how to connect your microphones and your cameras to it and just the basic setup. I also use an audio editing program called Audacity. It's open source. It's been around for, I think, over 20 years. Um, downloads fast, installs fast, and I've already done a video on how to do the basic setup and how to, to, to do the basic use of it. I'll put the links in uh, for those videos in the description of this video. And then I use DaVinci Resolve 
as my video and audio editor. It also does um, color grading, color adjustments, which is, I think has become an industry standard. And it ha also has an option or a function um, for, uh, it's called Fusion, which is basically the, the same as Adobe After Effects. So the only other thing, uh, one, uh, one other thing, if you're using two or more microphones, or if you're using a microphone and you're recording the audio from your desktop, so you're playing a video uh, online and you want to record that audio, if you open, once you're finished, if you open it with Windows Media Player, I don't know if this is a problem with the Windows Media Player or if it's just me, but I only hear one track. I don't hear both tracks or the, the other tracks. That's why you should use um, or download and install Audacity because then you can just drag your video into Audacity. It extracts the audio and you can see all the different tracks or channels and you can also listen to them so you'll know that everything was recorded. And then the last thing, I'm going to show you the basic Windows um, setup for the sound. So I'm going to pause the video and then um, you're going to see my desktop. Okay, so what you're looking at is my desktop. So what you want to find is this settings icon. If it's, I have it pinned to my taskbar. If you don't have it pinned to your task up, taskbar, come over to search, and this works with Windows 10 or 11. If you see, if you've recently used it, you'll see it up here. If not, just start typing in settings, and it'll, you'll see where it pops up and say, it'll say settings app. Just click on that. When that opens, select system, come over to sound, and what you're seeing now, this is the output. Normally it would be your speakers, but I have the headphones connected, so that's why you see that. Here you can adjust the, uh, the volume, and here's the input devices. So what you should see, and it will work if you have, um, if it had this, uh, digital audio interface selected you just wouldn't see this meter working but normally it will recognize your microphone and so right now it recognized the HyperX Quadcast S and as I'm speaking you can see the uh, the uh, uh, the uh, meter at, with my voice um, reacting to my voice if you use two or more microphones or possibly if you use a mic one microphone and the uh, de recording the desktop audio. If it's not capturing everything, you may have to select this microphone array. And here you can use this um, slider to adjust the microphone um, level. I just leave it at 100% for now because I was able to get the gain adjusted using the, the uh, uh, either an OBS Studio or using the gain controls on the HyperX uh, Quadcast and the um, uh, the Blue Yeti microphone. So there, you don't have to save this. Once you make the changes, just click the X in the upper right-hand corner to close out of it. So I, I really do hope this helped you out. I hope this um, helps you with your, with your audio um, quality and performance. And thank you for watching.